Uh, forget about it. It's not about banks. It's not about municipal bonds. This is a sleeper. This is a sleeper book of the summer. Meredith Whitney of Meredith Whitney Advisory Group. And the new book is The Fate of the States. We're going to dive into this here in a little bit. But this is, our, I can't say enough about the theme of the book, the new geography of American prosperity. Uh, just out. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Wonderful to see you again. Thanks so much. Great to see you. Everybody wants to know about banks. Right now, your, your view on the too big to fail banks, are they priced to perfect? or they can increase their value to book? I think they can certainly increase their value to tangible book. So you've got two banks that are trading below tangible book. And I assume you're talking about the big bank. Yes. Um, that's City and Bank America. And I don't think that there's anything on the horizon that's going to hurt them capital-wise. So, of course, they should trade to ta tangible book value. Um, and then you've got two banks, Wells and JP, that are trading well above tangible book value. So, um, you know, it depends on what you think Wells and JP mm -hmm. can earn. Um, these are not sexy stories. They're fix-it stories. It's all about expense reduction. And, uh, 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 you know, that means you get to tangible book, okay. you get to some book, but, you know. Their revenue growth is a soggy nominal GDP. You say expense reduction. This is where you make headlines. How ugly will the summer be for job reduction on global Wall Street? I think it's, I, I continue to think it's stealth job reduction. So it's just a steady beat down. 20 here, 12 here, 42 yep. there. Yep. I mean, look, you have uh, businesses still closing down entire departments. Um, and, you know, shareholders, rightly so, should be pressuring these banks to increase their return on capital, which have been, I'll use your expression, soggy at best. Mm -hmm. Do the big banks ever get sexy again? They do, but at, as much smaller institutions. You know, you can, uh, there's no reason why these banks can't be profit centers, but they, uh, they're they stuck on the notion that bigger is better, and that's just, it's an mm -hmm. antiquated notion. Think about how every other business you guys talk about operates. They're right. leaner and meaner, but for the big banks. She's been outspoken on municipal finance. Forget about that. Her new book, it's one of my summer reads. It's a 200-page essay on the future of America and the new American map of prosperity. Great to have you here. Thank you so much. Why does the East Coast and the Left Coast wi uh, not win? Because they are so structurally mired in housing and they're still, the hangover is still persistent. So the structural uh, unemployment will stay because the states don't have the money for retraining, investing in education. And actually, in these areas, you've had the h highest spikes in poverty over the last few years. So, um, so I think that it, as the strong states get stronger, the weak states also get weaker because they have to raise taxes, which mm -hmm. obviously uh, 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 disincentivizes rich people to stay around who are paying the bulk of the tax. They are going to stand up, get in a car, and leave. That's the core thesis, right? I mean, at dinner, conversations dominate around, you know, how do we move to Florida? What are we doing? What's the best state? Why, why are Which we is the best state? I mean, Texas, from population density, is attracting a lot of businesses. So for California, it's Texas. For New York and New Jersey it's, and Connecticut, it's Florida. What about the Midwest? We talk about the Sun Belt. We were all shocked by that migration years ago. Is Missouri the new Sun Belt? I think the new Sun Belt is the entire corridor, the 17-state corridor, from Texas all the way up to North Dakota, extending from um, from Colorado all the way to Indi Indiana, and uh, even even inc incorporating Wisconsin. Now, a lot of this is energy-related. So, mm -hmm. what's so exciting about the U.S. is it reinvents itself. Let's say every you know 30, 40 years, and with that comes a demographic shift in the country. So, think Rust Belt to Sun Belt to now the right. housing bu has housing bubble. Now, this is all going to come in. So factories are, are, are re-emerging throughout. This is not just about retirees. This is not about Grecian formula. The youth will move as well. <laughs> um, the youth is going to go where jobs are, right? Uh, everybody, the American dream is essentially about getting a job and creating a better life for yourself and your children. It's not about owning a home. So, mm -hmm. you know, debunk that myth. And um, where the opportunity is, is it clearly um, in the center of the, of the country. Now, it's um, it's spoken right. because you know, half the unemployment rates in the center of the country. You have big Businesses that are moving first right. and new development growth is, is happening there. Okay. And it's job growth on every level. Meredith, we're talking and buzzing about what's going on with billionaire hedge fund manager Stephen Cohen. He remains pretty defiant. We know that the firm received a lot of requests, withdrawal requests, billions of dollars, in fact. Most of the $4 billion they haven't already pulled out earlier in the year.
year. But SAC Capital insists that it will not stop managing outside money. It's not going to become just this family office. The firm's president actually sent an internal email out to employees this week saying that they have no plans to become a family office. That's according to people who are looking at the email. Meredith Whitney, our guest host for the hour, how much buzz is this generating on trading floors or around banks on Wall Street? This, this talk of what happens next to Steve Cohen. You know, pe people have been after Steve Cohen for a very long time, and you know I think the buzz has faded in terms of you know trading room conversations. Um, they look SAC has been so successful for so long, so you know of course it's going to draw a lot of attention. But in terms of the manhunt after Stephen Cohen, like this, that was it three four years, almost deep? five, yeah, almost five years deep. Um, I don't know, it kind of loses its its appeal, uh, you know, in the fifth year, right? If so we the, go back to oh, go ahead, Scarlett, is please. the thinking then that since it's taken five years and he still hasn't been implicated, then he must be innocent. I, I you <laughs> kind of think so. If they had something really good, wouldn't they use it, right? Enough already. Or when, you look at the future, when you look at the future of hedge funds here, you go going back to your days at Opco, and the idea of a traditional Wall Street business. There's a traditional value-added hedge fund business. Mr. Cohen, as you suggest, has been very successful. Are the days over of a traditional two and twenty hedge fund where they make those outsized fees? If you have the performance, you can clearly charge. Which is 12 percent of the people, or whatever. Right. If you have the performance, you're going to attract money. If you don't have the performance, you cannot, absolutely cannot justify those fees. Um, so I think uh, the, the, the world is getting um, you know, much harder for hedge funds to outperform unless you have a um, real unique you know, strategy. Mm. Um, you know, if you're just a run-of-the-mill plain vanilla hedge fund tra charging 2 and 20, it's, it's, you know, it's going to be hard to justify those fees. At SAC Capital has averaged 25% returns since 1992. And you talk about job losses on Wall Street, Meredith, the brain drain from the Wall Street big banks to hedge funds. You see that continuing? Um, I think that, um, you know, look, there are hedge funds that are struggling, that are, cl that are closing down. Um, you know, ta talent will go where it's best rewarded. So um, it could go to the buy side. I don't know if that, that, right. that, that massive shift from 90s to early 2000s is maybe over.